Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-Watershed production. Welcome to the show that brains you with the butt of a rifle, drives fang bolts through the palms of your hands, holds a blowtorch to the soles of your feet and peels your fingernails off with a sardine key. I am the steady incessant drip on your prone forehead, Aaron Bliss. And boiling your insides with a white-hot rectal poker is my card. Oh, and I will be. What's going on? What is going on? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Tonight's theme on Late Night Large is to- torture. Torture, that was torture, trying yeah, to get that yeah, out of it. Was, wasn't it? Jesus. Capital God. punishment, all kinds of other things. Vigilante torture, terrorist torture, all kinds of goodness. Sex. That's it. Mm, yes. Sex. Torture porn, who, who knows what else will come up. Sex. So, what do you understand to be, what do you uh, define it as? Fine piece of ass. Just lying there. Yeah. Begging to be taken. <laughs> and knowing that I can't do it. Why not? I lost my penis. <laughs> Thinking something like that. Uh, or perhaps you were manacled to a tank. You were excused if you were in yeah, So do. let's kick this, uh, let's get this party started and kick the shit off. Twist your melons. And fire it up! Fire it up! We are talking about torture. And if you say that to someone initially, I'd imagine one of the first things within their definition will be something that man inflicts on another man, or men, or women, or women inflict on man, etc., etc. Yeah. Anyone who says it is exclusively in the human domain, I will say, have you never seen a house cat playing with a dying bird? (laughs) Have you ever heard of a fucking spider wasp. Have you heard of a spider wasp? Those those bastards actually capture spiders, paralyze them, lay their eggs inside them yeah, yeah, yeah. and allow their young to feed on the dying spider who may take many many days and potentially weeks to die. Now that is something that mankind would be proud of being able to say they did. And I'll uh, beat my own argument by saying that that's something that mankind did something very similar to, which we'll come to when we talk about scaphism. Yes. Now, torture is the act of, I hope we can agree with this, is the act of deliberately inflicting severe physical pain and possible permanent injury to a person or, of course, an animal who is physically restrained or otherwise under the torturer's control or custody, pretty much unable to defend what is being done to them. If someone can fight back, then clearly it's not torture. Although some might argue mental torture, but again, in another way, if it's torture, the very definition of torture is that the person feels incapable of fighting back, whether that's mental or physical. Mm. Torture has been carried out or sanctioned by individuals, groups and, of course, states throughout history from ancient times to modern day and forms of torture can vary... Gra- oh, I love the little minute. ...can vary greatly in duration from only a few minutes to several days or even longer. Yes. Reasons for torture... Oh, I love it. Uh, I, uh, reasons uh, is, is a pretty stupid... Uh, Justify torture. Yeah, I, I, rather than reasons, I'm going to suggest motives. Motives, motives for, torture. for torture can include punishment, revenge, <laughs> political <laughs> re-education, no. deterrence, interrogation or coercion of the victim or a third party, or simply, of course, the most simple thing of all, the sadistic gratification of those yeah, either carrying out boy. or observing the torture. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Hmm. The torture Just... torture may not always intend to kill or even injure the victim, but sometimes it is deliberately fatal and can proceed 
and inevitable murder all serve as a very cruel form of capital punishment. In other cases, the torturer may be indifferent to the condition of the victim. Some forms of torture are designed to inflict psychological pain or leave as little physical injury or evidence as possible while achieving much psychological devastation. Yeah. Depending on the aim, even a form of torture that is intentionally fatal may be prolonged to allow the victim to suffer as long as possible. This is obviously where we shame our species, because torture has only officially been prohibited widely in the latter half of the 20th and 21st century. It is prohibited under international law and the domestic laws of most what we would call civilised countries. I mean, it sounds ridiculous to define like this. It is considered to be a violation of human rights. No, duh. And is declared to be unacceptable officially by Article 5 of the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Signatories of the Third Geneva Convention and the Fourth Geneva Convention officially agree not to torture prisoners in armed conflicts. Certain countries obviously think they're above this. Looking at you, US of A. Torture is also prohibited by the United Nations Convention Against Torture, which has been ratified by 147 countries. We should just note at this point that uh, I, I was not, I'm not actually joking about the USA routinely ignoring the idea that torture is completely against any civilised country's uh, mobis operandi or agenda for eliciting information. And at the same time, I mean, you've just got to look at Guantanamo Bay to understand that the US treats there. Uh, the subject of human rights with general contempt, uh, waterboarding and such. Motorboating. <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. That's what she said. Ugh. National and international legal prohibitions on torture derive from a consensus that torture and similar ill treatment are immoral as well as impractical. Well, that's a that's a good phrase because they well they are impractical. It depends what you want to obviously <laughs> elicit out of someone. If, if for instance, you you need to get, a, I don't I describe know. them as impractical. Okay, if you need to, if you need to, coax a secret, like a code or something, out of someone that you know that they're aware of. Torture, you know, it's perhaps a means to an end for you. However, if you're trying to elicit, say, a confession for a crime out of someone, it's completely impractical because it's obviously. In no way a foolproof method. People say anything to stop themselves being tortured. Exactly, like a confession. A false confession, yeah. A confession. What do you mean? If you're trying to get a confession, and you get a confession, I don't understand how you, why you're saying that's impractical. Why do you think most civilised courts will not recognise evidence obtained under torture? Like yeah, I've just uh, said, yeah, 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 people yeah. will do anything to avoid the, um, yeah, being, if, having pain inflicted on them. I.e., yeah, I'm not saying what, what it, if they it may, I'm not saying it validates the confession or even makes it valid. Yeah. What I'm saying is, means to an end. No, if if no one, if you no, but it's, if it's you get a practical. confession that nobody knows is obtained through torture, there wouldn't be anyone who wouldn't understand how it had been obtained. If you're gonna if you're going to torture someone to gain a confession in inverted commas and then lie about how it was obtained why not just forge their signature that's the same level of lying yeah, Be because yeah like I say people will say anything to avoid excruciating pain being inflicted on them including giving a false confession if they think it will stop their pain which is why it's impractical because it's not a confession it's just an admission that they want the pain to stop okay but generally but it, it, if, if, if it's something if it's if it's a black and white issue like you know that someone has a secret code that you need divulged yes then torture would be practical if completely I, immoral i'd say generally I, I don't think you could describe it as impractical if it was impractical people would do it of course they would Remember that. Oh, I, I don't okay. think unless it's practicality. The, unless, it's, unless it's for another reason, like sadistic yeah, well, gratification. Well, the, the, all I'm going to say is the majority of people who inflict or 
either inflict or allow or encourage torture are stupid people they're generally very ignorant stupid people and torture for them is a huge thrill for the power it gives them over someone else and what they see is I need to get this therefore I will be a big hard ass and, and torture this person and they'll give it to me and then I'll have done my job but as far as they're concerned it's the act of torture that's really the thing they get off on in my humble opinion mm, well you should know not under torture but, yeah but sometimes but to get off on it yeah to get off on it but Fucking sometimes moment. sometimes there isn't an end to the means the means is the end for instance if you shag a gangster's missus then the torture would have a very different purpose the torture itself would be the end it would be a way of vengeance obviously as they've already alluded to now here comes the fun part for most of recorded history, capital punishments were often deliberately painful. No shit, Sherlock. That's the very definition of torture. Severe historical penalties included, here come the big hitters, the breaking wheel, boiling to death, flaying, disembowelment, crucifixion, impalement, crushing, stoning, execution by burning, dismemberment, soaring, that's S-A-W-I-N-G scaphism or necklacing another story that no I'm going to <laughs> torture for some another story that I'm going to come back to is the magnificent Bulla Phalaris and the five pains are an example given from ancient China deliberately painful methods of execution for severe crimes were taken for granted as part of justice until the development of humanism in the 17th century philosophy movements and cruel and unusual punishment came to be denounced in the English Bill of Rights in 1689 torture was of course prevalent and uh, well thought of in the middle ages particularly medieval dark ages the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, only after two world wars, did we get an official call to arms that said, listen, let's, let's not deliberately hurt each other very, very badly. Marked the recognition, at least nominally, of a general ban of torture by all UN member states. Its effect in practice is limited as the United States has proven. However, as the Declaration is not ratified officially and does not have legally binding character in international law, but is rather considered part of customary international law. I mean, what a joke. But of course, laws are applied by countries. Pretty much every country in the world considers, for instance, murder to be a crime. You can't have a completely binding world court that would consider torture or could prosecute someone from any country for torture or prosecute a country for torture laws are generally applied by country I know obviously there are international criminal courts and the Hague but that's a different story let's start talking about these devious methods of torture first of all do you remember any of the big hitters of torture get, 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 throw, out, throw me out some uh Throw me out some celebs, some icons from the world of torture. People who were renowned for deploying torture as a particular method in their madness. Well, one that springs to mind, and possibly the most prolific through history. Go on. Mike Larch. Ah, <laughs> shut up. Basically, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I've heard about this guy. You get in his grill, and... Um, <laughs> Shit goes down, and yeah. you'll wish you hadn't. But never in the toilet. No. <laughs> no, never in the toilet. Oh, dear. All I can no, say no. is, uh, if you come around large as gaff, post no bills. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, there's lots of civilization through history that use torture. Well, nearly every in... No, I'm thinking of the big hitters. G g give me some... Uh, fuck's sake. What, like the Romans? The obvious, yeah, for instance. <laughs> Let, let's think of, think of some obvious Romans. I don't know, Nero. 
What about uh, Caligula? That's a great example. He loved a good torture, didn't he? He yeah. loved watching it anyway and getting his rocks off. Okay, what about another one? Here, here's another one. Genghis Khan. Oh, Fucking that, loved it, didn't he? That boy was mental for it. He loved a bit of cannibalism as well. Oh, yeah. fair play to him. <laughs> fair play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't go wrong with our man Genghis. Vlad the Impaler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all giving it loads. Well, wasn't there some... Uh, go on, go on. Some, some guy at, at some point in history... Go on. ...on some sort of... big, like, wooden thing... And like, like nailed to it and left there. All oh, right. Was it? Is that like kind of a cross shaped? Was it? Thing, yeah. Oh yeah. Pa- what was 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 it? Uh, Apparently that happened. Or oh yeah, this, uh, I hear something. I don't know if you've heard about that. Or yeah, he was some kind of king of of something or other, and uh, he uh, his, his dad was a bit of a big cheese, was he? Like, something like that. that I, it rings bells. Well, maybe it was because he was a carpenter. You know the irony of the thing. Maybe his carpentry was so bad that they, yeah. you know, so n- n- nail into a piece of wood. Or, yeah. Anyway, selling piece of dodgy en- shit. Enough of that. Can we think of any more that that loved a bit of torture? Personally, maybe maybe Stalin. Uh, I bet he loved a bit of torture, didn't he? Uh, po- Pol Pot. Oh, no, I bet he wasn't averse to it. Uh, hang on. Well, Hitler. Anybody else? I, I'm, I'm thinking of... Fritzl. Yeah, no, t- yeah. true. Yeah, he loved a bit of torture, didn't he? Yeah, just going, moving it moving it elsewhere, thinking outside the box. Yeah, people who seem to take a lot of pleasure, Me? particular pleasure, shut up, <laughs> in, their, uh, yeah. in the act of inflicting horrible pain on other people. It's one of those taboo subjects, isn't it, Mike? It is. Great suffering. We don't like to talk about it. And we're obviously going to talk about it quite flippant, flip. <laughs> we're going to talk about it quite flippantly tonight because, of course, though we have respect for the the dead, their pain's over, fortunately. Ours goes on, and we glory in uh, the pretty despicable and reprehensible methods that we use to dispatch them. <laughs> oh my God! It just just reading this, you have to laugh because otherwise, you just you just break down and, and kill yourself at the 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 contempt that human beings should be held under of what they do to each other and you can you imagine if mankind had deployed all of the massive efforts and creativity in methods of torture and killing of each other if they devised that and moved it towards health and equality and other methods of perhaps ensuring a prosperous and happy survival and progress of the human species. Anyway, I thought we'd uh, debate some of the more debased (laughs) torture methods, Mike, here. Absolutely. Uh, We're talking about European states abolished torture torture from their statutory law in the early, late 18th and early 19th centuries, etc., etc. Tortures before that included the Chevalet, in which an accused witch sat on a pointed metal horse with weights strung from her feet. Decent. Of course, torture, again, you know, witch... I mean, the witch hunts... The witch hunts were the kind of more farcical end of it. You know, witch ducking, you know, drowning them on stools, burning them at the stake, fuck's sake, I mean... Sexual humiliation torture included four sitting on red-hot stools... Grésillon, also called Pennywinkies in Scotland, crushed the tips of fingers and toes in a vice-like device. Ah, the Spanish boot. Or leg screw. <laughs> you know, was, this was used mostly in Germany and Scotland. It was a steel boot that was placed over the leg. Uh, basically, then you tighten it up, and uh, <laughs> shit goes down. The pressure from the squeezing just shatters the shin bone. Like into a million pieces. So, uh, an anonymous Scotsman, oh, because this is a reliable source, <laughs> so, some Scottish bloke uh, said that it was the most severe and cruel pain in the world. Thank you, wow. Scottish bloke, for your input. Yeah. We will be right back after another break to allow you to. Uh, yes. <laughs> like we did there. To have a glass of water and uh, take a, some brief uh, 
brief relief from uh, the agony that we're inflicted upon you. Don't be a puffin. Listen to Late Night Large. Now, if you thought that was disgusting, we're going to get even more. We're going to get right up to the elbow in your guts. As we're discussing torture, methods, the madness, the melancholy, the Machiavellian plans of... The rage and hard on that uh, sometimes follow. Yes. Oh my god, this is horrendous. <clears throat> the eschel, more commonly known as the ladder, or rack, was a long table that the accused would be lying upon and be stretched violently. You won't be surprised to hear that. That's a classic in any torture museum. I should just say, by the way, cool. uh, I've been to the torture museum in Amsterdam. It's quite cool. Yeah? The torture was used so intensely that on many occasions the victim's limbs would be wrenched out of the socket and at times be torn from the body entirely. On some special occasions, I love how they say special, special occasions, occasions, as if it's a birthday. <laughs> a tortillon was used in conjunction with the ladder, which would severely squeeze and mutilate the genitals at the uh, same time. Uh, uh. Oh. Similar to the ladder was the lift. It too stretched the limbs of the accused. This time, however, the victim's feet were strapped to the ground and their arms were tied behind their back before a rope was tied to their hands and lifted upwards. Oh. This caused the arms to snap before the horrific portion of the stretching began. People are fucking sick. <laughs> they really are. We haven't even glossed the surface of these ridiculous... Oh. Okay... We're going to delve back into the ancient history. Going back to those iconic versions that we mentioned earlier. Mike, what do you know about the breaking wheel? Uh, sorry, I'm still holding my balls. Ah, come on, what do you know about uh, the breaking wheel? What do I know about the breaking wheel? I remember reading about this in secondary school. Uh, refresh me. <laughs> I will refresh you. Open wide. Basically, oh, victims... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Basically, victims were tied, much like you would be to a crucifix. They were tied, strapped, to a stone wheel. The wheel, which I imagine would be uh, platformed on some kind of a spinny or, I don't know, piece of wood that it would then rotate around in some way, they'd be strapped to the wheel and you would... Um, you would rotate the wheel round as you were rotating round you would bludgeon their limbs with blunt objects perhaps stones or clubs or pieces of wood and smash their limbs to pieces as they were being spun decent sounds like a <laughs> yeah yeah oh fantastic sounds like a bit of a laugh eh? boiling to death that sounds something like might happen in a witch's cauldron yeah grot, grot bags you have a lot to answer for flaying well, it's one of those great things that the uh, Bible's given us as well, because I believe one of the apostles had it done to them. It's uh, it's peeling someone's skin off. Uh, disembowelment. Like most things, they had it better in the early days. They did it nice and clean. They sliced the belly open and let the guts fall out. Now, you know, you've got you've got all the complex little movements that, you know, it's, it's the, the art's gone out of it. In my opinion. Crucifixion. As we said, we, we think some kind of carpenter might have been subject to that before. Nailing someone to a cross and then lifting the cross above the ground yeah. so they sort of hang there. I don't know who this boat was. But... Uh, impalement. As we discussed before with uh, Vlad the Impaler, he was one of the, the first... He was one of the early mafia bosses, really. Because, as we know, crime syndicates, they, they rule by fear. And the way that they rule is, if somebody crosses you, you don't just off them. You don't just kill them to show your contempt. What you need to do is send out a message to anyone else who might consider doing the same thing. That not only will you be killed, you will suffer like hell. And you will be humiliated. Vlad the Impaler knew this, and the way that he terrified his enemies, because of course he was one man. And one man can be overpowered fairly easily unless people are terrified of the consequences of potentially going up against him. Vlad the Impaler, he'd, uh, you know, he'd, he'd 
knock people around until they were pretty docile. He would then he would then insert a large wooden stick, pole, probably sharp at one end, usually up the anus, and keep feeding it until it eventually came out of the mouth. Now, although this would do a great amount of damage to people, it would not kill them, usually. He would then, using, I'd imagine, a few men, lift the pole off the ground and plant it there so that people would eventually slide down the pole over time and potentially take hours or even days to die from the experience. In the meantime, their suffering, their wailing, their contorted agony would serve as a warning to other people who felt like they might be crossing Big Vlad. Pretty good way of doing it, really. (laughs) Yeah. (coughs) I heard it's your preferred way. One of. Well... Well, your butt plugs anyway mm-hmm. the uh, crushing stoning that has a very different meaning these days <laughs> by execution burning. by burning again, that's the I've got to it. say the witches at the stake are absolutely horrible but why don't we throw in right now in fact no he won't because it's just coming dismemberment uh, we know what that is is cutting off your appendages arms and legs just t- turn you into a turn you into a you know horrible uh, sawing, I, I mean, I, I believe another one of the apostles was actually sawn in half. That was uh, that was another method of dispatching them. Now we get into the good part: scaphism. Do you know anything about this, Mike? Have you heard of scaphism before? Um, I don't think so. It sounds like an interesting word term, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's also known as boating, I believe. <laughs> Something similar. Boating. Yeah. Now, I've got you intrigued now, haven't I? Yeah. Now, basically, the reason it's known like that, just just quickly imagine, if you will, I'll paint a picture in your mind. Just oh, imagine. I'm sure it would be a lovely picture. Just imagine two very small boats. Say, one-man canoes. Oh, yeah? What a pleasant picture. Okay, just imagine them. Now, upturn them and stitch them together so that they're completely bound together. But there's a person between them. So you've got a person inside there. You cut a hole, obviously, for their arms to come out. There's a little hole for their head to come out with their neck. And maybe there's some holes cut for their feet, right? But encircling the rest of them are these boats. Now, because they're obviously bound with the, this, these boats around them, they they can't get their arms around themselves, you know, that their movement's restricted. They'll be force-fed like rich foods honey and something else to the point of being sick and potentially shitting themselves they would continue to be fed until they were in a you know the pretty dire state maybe passing out once this point had generally been reached the rest of the honey and sweet stuff would generally be smothered around their faces and arms and legs you can guess where this is going they would then float them out on a lake or some such body of water now as you can guess their uh, their bowel movements would make it smell and, and smell pretty horrendous and give them lots of sores and horrible things inside the boat section and of course smearing the sweet stuff on them attracted parasites especially flies and potentially stinging insects like wasps thereafter the torture took care of itself because if lying in your own crapulence isn't enough, you then have parasites potentially breeding around you and potentially stinging and eating you. That, my friends, is the glory of scaphism. I think I read about something similar. I think I read about something similar where somebody was like strapped to a tree or something and had their, their insides carved out and basically sweet stuff was was like smeared inside them in order to attract ants to eat them from the inside out I swear I read about that somewhere you'll notice that mankind stops there's there's no shame mankind has no limits to how he can how creative he can be in inflicting agonizing pain on on his fellow man 
Now the five pains... Oh, in fact, sorry, necklacing I was going to come to. Necklacing, Mike, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of it. It unfortunately was prevalent, I believe, in apartheid South Africa, and I think that's where it came to the public consciousness. It's, it's, it's just horrendous. You basically put a tyre around someone's head and neck and you pull it over so one of the person's arms kind of fit through it thereby they can't possibly remove the tyre the tyre is soaked and filled with petrol and you then immolate them ah, yeah that's yeah. that's necklacing that's absolutely horrendous and I believe like I say that was active in apartheid South Africa we'll be right back with, amongst other things, the things you have to look forward to, the five pains from ancient China and the bull of Phalaris. It's not special. It's not a beautiful or unique radio show. It's the same trite, generic pap as everything else. We are the Fight Club generation, and this is our radio show, and you are our listeners. Mike, have you read 1984? Have I read 1984? Yeah. I haven't. You're obviously aware of it, the Orwell novel about Big Brother and yeah, the, uh, not... the dystopian future where the government watches your every move and controls the media and all kinds of things. No, not anyway, uh, there's, uh, there's a theme right towards the end of the book known as Room 101. And it's, yeah, it's the room they take people to be re-educated into. And Room 101, I always like the concept. Room 101 is basically filled with the one thing that you couldn't possibly tolerate and would surrender your love and your beliefs for. So for some people, it's basically someone's greatest fear. Some people it's being covered in spiders. For some people it's being left alone in the dark. For other people it's, I don't know what, being forced to have sex with beautiful women. Yes, Mike. I'd hate that. Very good. No, seriously, can you tell us what your <coughs> what would your room 101 consist of, do you think? Being forced to have sex with beautiful oh, women. Oh, shut <laughs> up. Uh, just in case someone never plans on doing anything like that to me, that's, uh, that'd be what I was, right? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I see, I see what you're doing, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. Oh, God. I don't know. No? Uh, okay, fine. Oh, well, what would yours be? What? The very worst thing. No, I, I, unfortunately, I think it probably, I think it would be spiders. I, I just, I couldn't. They would, you know, they're talking about psychological torture. While we're on the subject oh, of psychological gosh. torture, why don't we throw out a few psychological torture methods? Like, for instance, waterboarding is a great example, or oh. water torture generally. You know, the being completely immobilized and having a single drip of water dropping on your forehead. People think nothing to it. After an hour or two, you are fucking suffering. Waterboarding, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Bush regime loved it. Do you know what it is? Similar to... Similar to jizz boarding. For oh, those of you that... It's not, and it's not similar to Ouija boarding either. <laughs> Obviously, they're immobilised. They have some kind of a cloth put over their head, and basically, they then pour lots and lots water. of water over them, and yeah. it basically simulates drowning. Without similar. actually drowning you. Yeah, so it's similar to just boarding. <sighs> Shut up. Okay, are we ready to hear about the bull of Phalaris, Mike? It, it, ancient Greece is the story. Oh, be good then. It's the story. The, Greeks, the, the Greeks, Greeks. Oh, the Greeks and the Carthaginians, and I mean the Crusades. That's another example of uh, some horrendous atrocities. Anyway, the the brazen bull is the story of the brazen bull. Uh, proposed to Phalaris, who I think was a king in ancient Greece in mid sixth century BC. Basically, he was a he was a sadistic bastard, and he he sent for his greatest engineer or something, and he said, "Listen, I want a new method of torturing criminals. I, I want I want it to be so fresh and original, and and I want it to impress me with with how cruel it is." So the uh, the engineer went away and he, he worked as hard as he could and he came up with this devious idea. He built a brazen bull, which was basically a statue made of, I think, cast iron or something oh, similar. I do know. Actually. And it, had, it basically yeah. had an opening in the bottom that could be sealed shut. And what you would do is you would force the criminal up inside and seal it shut. 
and you would then light a pyre underneath yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, I have. I'm so it was this. basically like an oven, and the reason it was so creative is because the wailing of the person boiling alive inside was supposed to sound like a bull wailing, and smoke was supposed to come out of his nostrils, and it was supposed to be a big show. Anyway, he got his uh, comeuppance anyway because the the king was so impressed with it he sent his engineer to try it out although he came to a happy ending because he only cooked him until he was almost dead and then he pulled him out and I think threw him over off a cliff or something <laughs> so there we go big happy ending <laughs> now the five pains of China Mike five punishments uh, oh hang on five punishments in imperial China they're not actually that bad oh my god I was just reading the, the five punishment for female offenders. One of them is oh. permission to commit suicide. <laughs> you Jesus. may commit suicide. You must grind grain. Wow. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Take five punishments easy. in ancient China. Let's go with these because these are a little bit more grisly. Okay. Uh, offender would be tattooed on the face or forehead with indelible ink. Not, mm. not great. Offender's nose was cut off. Better. Amputation of the left or right foot, or both. Some claim that this punishment involved removal of the kneecap. Jesus, they've been. Uh, that's where the IRA got it then. Male offenders' reproductive organs were removed, the penis was removed, and testicles were cut off, and the offender was sentenced to work as a eunuch in the imperial palace. That's where they came from. And the death sentence: execution, quartering, boiling alive tearing off an offender's head and four limbs by attaching them to chariots yeah um wow where do you stand on hang drawing and quartering I'm all for it I was just, oh, sorry I was just reading about the uh, um, imperial China five punishments yeah uh, that's, that's pretty stupid yeah do you, do you know about it? It. do you remember hang sh shut do you, wh bring, no, what do you remember about hang drawing and quartering? What do you mean? What do I remember about it? How, what is it? Come on, give us a publicly hanging people and drawing them and then quartering <laughs> them. Yes, but they hung them until they were nearly dead. They weren't actually dead, did they? So they pulled them down while they were still but like like half hanging. Basically. Yeah, half hanging. Then uh, drawing them, which is probably worse than being hung. Drawing them was basically uh, cutting them from groin to sternum. Yeah. So their insides were exposed. And then quartering them was cutting them into four pieces. Although quartering could sometimes apply to tying their arms and legs to four horses yeah, and then I was driving say, them yeah, apart. But... Which, uh, I mean, that's... Wow. That, that's just absolutely outrageous. But no, I don't... <laughs> I'm pretty mad. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Okay. I know a few people that where do you stand up, Where do you stand shut up, Where do you stand on bamboo torture? Bamboo torture? you heard torture. about that? It's not so much torture as just execution, but it's obviously it's quite torturous. Bamboo torture. Uh, you basically tie. I think you um you tie someone down and you force feed them bamboo seeds. And I don't know if you know about bamboo seeds. They they grow in record time, like a few hours. And basically, you, you strap the victim down, and then you wait until the bamboo actually grows. And it's so strong when it's growing, it will actually burst through the body. So. That's how you uh, finish them off. Really? Yeah, no, seriously. How does it grow? It grows, it grows. What does bamboo need to grow then? Not much, clearly. <laughs> the but thing, just moisture, probably. What, in the stomach, the acid? Would that not destroy the seed? Interesting. Well, no, it's an interesting point, but obviously it doesn't, because it's... Uh, probably, <laughs> I'd imagine it wouldn't be still used today, but... No, some. Um, mm, I might eat some bamboo seeds. Now I used. To <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike. See what's going on. <laughs> the only thing you're not going to be eating is a KFC mini fillet. We haven't even touched on, you know, the gr the Greek on. myths. Oh. Do you remember the uh, the way that they said they used to torture people who offended the gods? I mean, for instance, do you remember the story of Tantalus? Tantalus. I mean, it's where probably we got the word tantalise. No. Do you not remember it? He, uh, oh, I can't remember what Tantalus actually did. The was his face that was, like, oh. had to then, like, hold up the world or whatever. Oh, Atlas. Atlas. Yeah, that yeah. was a good one. Sisyphus. You ever say to anyone, I've got a Sisyphean task? 
it's where he had to roll a boulder up to the top of a hill but the top of the the top of mountain and but the top of the mountain wasn't big enough to hold a boulder so it would always roll back down so he had to do it eternally with no like Ixion Ixion was as as a murderer and he was set rolling around the sky strapped to a wheel of fire then there was yeah, then there was uh, Tantalus, who always really intrigued me. His punishment was he was uh, he was stood up to his neck in a pool of water with a tree of juicy grapes overhanging, and the plump grapes were hanging literally just above his head. Every time he reached for the grapes, they'd move a little bit out of the reach of his fingertips, and every time he bent down to drink, the water level would sink. So he'd be tormented by hunger and thirst for the rest of his days. Do you remember what happened to Prometheus? Chained to a rock. Oh. Had an eagle. Was it an vultures, eagle? Vultures, wasn't it? No, Sorry. I think it was an eagle. And he, I think an eagle, no. an eagle flew down and, and plucked out his liver every day, and he'd be in agony for the rest of the day. Mm. And then the night time it would heal back up, and the same thing would happen the next day. That was punishment for sh- giving man the gift of fire. Yeah. So many movements that have inspired torture. You know, the Inquisitions, the uh, the Crusades, the Roman Empire, uh, the Third Reich, well, yeah. well, uh, Stalin's Russia. I mean, there have been so many inspirational institutions <laughs> that have. Uh, and let's not forget the mafia. Especially in Mexico. Mexico, there's some bad shit goes down yeah, there. The Mafia got some shit going down from... Some really horrific, horrific crimes. I've always thought that... I mean, the kind of the kind of rape squads that go around in African dictatorships, that, that just sounds pretty horrendous. Just going through and slaughtering all the men in the village, raping the women and children and burning their houses. Sounds fun. Shut up. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Execution by slow slicing. Death by a thousand cuts. We didn't mention that, did we? Oh my god, that slow slicing picture. Have you seen that? Have you seen what's happening to him? Jesus Christ. People, if you go onto the Wikipedia torture page, take a look at the the, the execution by slow slicing in Beijing. Apparently, in 1904... A guy's having the meat, the fattier parts of his meat sliced off. He's got his pecs cut off. He's got his thighs sliced off. People, you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. You human beings, you're going to hell in a handbasket. Decent. Despite what's been discussed tonight, torture is neither fun nor glamorous. Please don't indulge in it. <coughs> but by all means, read about it. Because only by reading and learning about these things do we know how what mankind is definitely capable of and not to repeat history and we will grow you next week be excellent to each other please don't talk to you no matter how tempting unless of course it's wanted well S&M who knows we should have gone into that more good night